Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the uh, options and configuration settings for the Beltronix GT360 and go over uh, how to use and program the detector. Now, in order to change settings, you can do it from the detector or you can pair your phone with the detector, run the Escort Live app and change all of your settings here. Uh, let's go ahead and run through the buttons real quick and then we'll do all the uh, options and everything here through the phone just because it's easier. Now, if we take a look at the top of the detector, you can see we've got a couple buttons. We've got uh, plus and minus, which is our volume. Uh, mark is going to be allowing us to manually mark this location as a uh, GPS location. So every time we come by, the detector will alert us that we are back in this same location. Uh, we've got the brightness button here on the left. Full, dark, minimal, medium, maximum, auto. So you can adjust uh, manually the brightness of the detector, or you can have it in auto mode, which is my preference. That way the detector gets brighter in the daytime and dimmer at night automatically. We've got the sensitivity adjustment right here. Uh, auto scan is basically gonna reduce the sensitivity in the city, but then raise the sensitivity back up when we're traveling at faster speeds on the highway. Auto no X. Auto no X is uh, the same idea, but it just disables X band. And you can even see when I change it here, it also changes in the app and vice versa. Auto low K. Auto low K uh, is gonna reduce K band sensitivity even further to help filter out any sort of weak alerts. Uh, so it's just a way to quiet the detector down even further, but it will reduce your range because it's filtering out any uh, alerts, including legitimate police radar guns when you're farther away and the signal is weaker. So it's alerting just to stronger alerts. Highway. Highway mode is gonna be full sensitivity on all bands at all times. Uh, note, this doesn't apply to uh, KA band. KA is always gonna be full sensitivity no matter what setting you have Auto set here. Scan. We've got our power button right there, and then we've got our mute button uh, for muting our alerts. And you can also use it to uh, long press it to manually report to escort live a location. And then uh, other drivers will get notified of, hey, there was a cop spotted here. So that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, anyways, let's go through the uh, the app itself and go over the different options. Actually, before we do that, um, in order to get into the menu manually, press and hold the brightness and sensitivity options. Programming. Or the buttons, rather. User mode. Advanced. Uh, and then you can kind of go through. Pilot mode, full, word, display color, copper. All the different options like that with the brightness button. Red, green, blue, copper. And then with the uh, volume up and down buttons, that'll allow you to cycle through the different options for, Completed. well, this option. Uh, and then it kicks you out of the menu and it times out. Uh, anyways, as you can see, we've got uh, a lot of the same stuff here. Uh, let's go on next to the pilot display. So this is gonna be what the detector displays when there's no alert present. So right now you can see it just says auto scan. If we switch it to scanning bar, you can see we've got the scanning bar on top. Personally, I find that a little bit distracting. I know some people like it because it's like, ooh, my detector's scanning, that's cool. Uh, I disable it, I like it like that. Uh, meter mode, we've got a couple different ways of actually displaying how the alerts present themselves visually. Uh, the standard mode is gonna look like this. And we'll just mute it real quick. Uh, but as you can see, when we've got the alert, we have our front and rear signal strength. Uh, because the radar gun is actually really close to the detector, uh, both front and rear are lighting up like crazy. But in practice, when the signal's ahead, you'll get the front signal. And if it's behind, you'll get the rear signal. We've got our arrows right there in the middle. Um, now, if we switch over to spec display, it'll display the frequency of the signal as well. Standard is going to put more focus on the strength versus spec display is also gonna give us the frequency. This is uh, the way I usually prefer running it. And then if you want the simple display, it can display slow down or caution, uh, depending on if you're above the speed limit or not. Auto mute is gonna allow us to automatically reduce the volume after a couple seconds. So the detector will alert at full volume for a couple seconds, and then after it gets our attention, uh, it will quiet down and reduce the volume as it continues to alert. So as you could hear it uh, drop the volume there. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna turn it off so that the uh, alerts, you can hear them normally, but in practice, that's a pretty helpful feature. And the different volume levels just adjust how quiet the detector drops the volume down to. Audio tones, we have a choice of how the detector's tones sound. Uh, standard is gonna be our standard Beltronic sounds. Uh, if you prefer kind of a more mild sound, which sounds kind of like a, a doorbell, you can choose the mild option. Personally, I like the standard option because uh, you can more easily differentiate between different bands. Uh, you've got a ramp up to let you know the signal strength, whereas you don't really get that with mild. And so uh, I find the standard to be more helpful and informative. 
ZR3 mode. If you are pairing an escort laser jammer, or as they like to call laser shifter, uh, with your radar detector, you can control it here from your detector. If you are running the detector standalone without a laser jammer plugged into it, this doesn't do anything. It has to do with controlling a laser jammer. But basically, you can tell the laser jammer to disable altogether. You can have it detect laser only, or you can have it uh, jam as well. Again, which is what escort calls shifting, but otherwise, same exact thing. Uh, I'll turn it off, but it doesn't actually matter here uh, what you set it to if you don't have a laser jammer plugged in. And uh, laser detection, by the way, for the radar detector is a different option down here, so it's totally separate. Again, this is just for uh, the laser jammer controls themselves. Uh, the voice, if you want to hear the... Uh, the voices when you go into the menus or announce the band you have the option or you can just turn it off here uh, which is what I prefer and I just focus more on the ramp up and the sounds that way but we'll leave it on just for the video auto power this is a helpful option if you have your radar detector plugged into a power source that doesn't turn off with your car uh, if that's the situation you could park your car but the detector stays on drains your car battery and you can't start your car up next time this can basically take the detectors GPS and say hey I've been stationary moving zero miles an hour for a while. After this period of time, I'm gonna turn off to prevent the card battery from being drained. Uh, so you can choose how long you want it for here. Quick note, if you enable any of these options, after 30 minutes of being stationary, the detector's display will turn off, again, to save battery, but it'll stay on until you reach this period of time. Uh, units, we can change between uh, miles per hour, as you can see here, or kilometers per hour, depending on what you need. Uh, the GPS filter, really helpful to leave it on. It basically enables all the GPS functionality, uh, and there's a lot of really useful ones built into the detector, so you can leave that one on. Uh, auto learn is basically the, uh, well, automatically learn where false alerts are located from speed signs and shopping centers. Uh, that way when you pass by them repeatedly, the detector will learn that and then automatically save those as false alerts and filter them out for you in the future. I have it turned off for now so that it doesn't actually start locking out the false alerts that I'm hitting it with for the video, but uh, in practice, leave it on. It's a really helpful feature around town. Cruise alert is basically low speed muting, and you could say, hey, when I'm traveling below this speed right here, uh, I want the detector to give me uh, two quick beeps when it picks up a radar signal and then go silent. Here's what that's like. So as you can hear, no voice announcement, just two beeps, and then totally silent. You can choose what speed threshold you want here, um, and when you're running Escort Live, and you can see that I am because it displays the speed limit of the road that I'm on. I'm not actually on a road right now, so it's not displaying anything, but uh, when you're driving around on the road, it'll override whatever speed that you set here with the speed limit of the road that you're on. Be aware that this speed limit is usually pretty good, but it's not always accurate, and it doesn't take into account uh, temporary changes such as speed zones or construction zones, but the way that it works is uh, normally it's going to use this, but if you pair it to Escort Live, it will always override this speed with whatever the speed limit is for the road that you're on. Uh, over speed alert, the detector can notify you when you're traveling over a set speed as just a reminder of like, hey, you're traveling too fast or whatever you like. So that's what that option is for. The language allows you to choose between English and Espanol. We've got our display color, so uh, we can choose what color you want if you want it to match your vehicle's interior or maybe you want it to match uh, the look of the detector itself. Speed on display, if you want the detector to display uh, the voltage for whatever your, you know, your alternator, your car battery or whatever, you can display that. Otherwise, you can turn it on and have your speed displayed right on the detector, which is actually pretty handy. You can see your speed and the speed limit side by side. I think that's pretty handy. And then finally, user mode, uh, you can switch between advanced and novice. Novice basically takes away most of the uh, configuration options when you go into the detector. Um, it allows you to change the display color and switch the units from miles, or miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Uh, but all the radar stuff is going to be set to the default settings. If you want to adjust anything besides color and units, uh, switch it to advanced mode and then all the options will open up here in the detector uh, when you go in this way. Otherwise, you can, well... You can always just go in here anyway, even if you have it set to uh, novice mode. But that's really meant for uh, just the options in here. Uh, next, we've got the ability to adjust our different bands as far as what the detector is going to be detecting and alerting to. Uh, laser, if you want it to uh, detect a laser or not, you've got the option. Uh, if you want it to detect KA band, 67 millisecond pop radar, you can do that. Recommended to leave it off since it's pretty much not in use. Um, done tons of videos on it. Just leave it off for better performance and fewer false alerts. Uh, if you want it to scan all of KA, K 
K-band or X-band, you have that option right here. Uh, if you want to turn off X-band, for example, since that's only used in a few places around the country, such as Ohio and New Jersey and a few other rural places here and there, you can disable it. And then otherwise, you can just leave it turned on. Uh, we've got some options for band segmentation down here, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and if you want to get into any of these options, you actually do need to disable the options there, and then you will be using these segments. And again, I'll show you that more in just a second. Uh, TSR is our traffic sensor rejection. So uh, if you're living in an area where traffic sensors are in use on the highway, then uh, you can just enable this filter and it will filter out any brief bursts of K-band radar coming from any traffic sensors. This will negatively affect performance and so it's recommended to leave it off unless you're on the highway and you keep getting blasts of traffic sensors uh, separate from BSMs, but actually traffic sensors, uh, you can enable that, but otherwise leave it turned off. Now, K-band segmentation is a feature that's uh, particularly useful overseas. It's not as useful here in the U.S. because police transmit radar uh, all over the K-band range, especially 1, 2, and 3. Segment 4, you could actually consider disabling. That's more for, like, red flex photo radar systems. Uh, but those are in Arizona, for example. And so, um, yeah, it's usually just recommended to leave it turned on. But if you want to get into any sort of uh, band segmentation, actually, here, I'll show you this. So we've got our detector alerting to... 24.123. Uh, here, I'm going to mute it real quick. Um, but 24.123 is a segment 2 alert. You can see if we disable segment 2, the detector is going to continue alerting, right? If we turn off K band, you'll notice that uh, even though I'm still transmitting, that alert goes away. But if I enable segment 2 again, that alert comes back. And so if you want to do any of the segmentation, the key thing is you want to have that band turned off, and then you have control over the individual bands right here. And so you can see right here, again, I turn off the segment. And then if I want, I can also turn on all of K-band and it's sweeping everything, even though I have the segment right there disabled. And so this is your main thing. It's going to scan all of K-band. If you want any of the segmentation options, uh, we just go in here and we choose which segments we want the detector to alert to. Uh, now the same applies to KA band. If you want to access any of the KA band segmentation options, you're going to want to go up here and disable KA band. As weird as that sounds, you're going to disable this. And then you're going to have all the options here for KA band segmentation. Here in the US, the, uh, the main bands that are in use are going to be, or well, the main frequency ranges, segment 2, segment 5, and segment 8. Some people like to also scan for segment 4 and segment 6 to help with uh, some out-of-tune stalker guns that transmit around 34-7 plus minus. Um, now, a quick note about band segmentation. It's, uh, I'm sure, just like the MAX 360C, where it adjusts only what frequencies the detector alerts to, not what frequencies it scans to. It's always scanning the entirety of uh, K-band or KA when you have this enabled. And so adjusting this does not impact performance the way it does on some other older detectors, such as the Escort Redline. This is primarily for alerting and muting, not for performance. So just a heads up about that. And then finally, we've got a couple options here as far as getting notified to any sort of red light cameras, uh, speed cameras, things like that. Um, if a red light camera is also a speed camera in one integrated unit, that's what this is for. Uh, any sort of known speed traps, for example, are right there. Um, other is just kind of other alerts that Escort Live has. And then Air Patrol are areas where... Uh, Enforcement is often done from helicopters or from airplanes. It's not going to tell you if it's actively in use right now. It just lets you know that you're in an area where speed enforcement done by aircraft is often done. So that's what all this is for. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's just a quick run through as far as all the different uh, radar detector options. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Just ask down in the comment area below. Other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. And I think my detector just locked up. Okay.